Hey everyone, so we are getting the first part of Secret Swan soon and I want to make this video to make a guide on how to be very efficient with the event, especially since we had the chance of getting this 5 star Natsume card, which I know a lot of people really really want. And I have to say that getting this Natsume card is very time consuming. And a lot of times when you use diamonds for this event to get the 5 star Natsume, it's out of convenience and respect to your time. In this video, I wanted to sort of help mitigate, if not just make it so you don't have to use any diamonds for Natsume. Because I think personally you can get one copy of Natsume for free, maybe even two, honestly. But two I think is a little bit of a stretch. But in this video, we're going to talk about the scouts that are going to come out for the event, both the first and the second part and just the event and how to grind for the Natsume 5 star card in the most cost efficient way. Okay, but with that, let's just go ahead and start. So first thing we're going to talk about are the scouts that are going to be in the event. And since the event is in two parts, there are going to be two gotcha scouts. And the first scout we're going to get is Secret Swan Part A, which is going to have the 5 star Tori. Tori is a red card of his main stat in Dance, and support skills increase drop rate of large red pieces. And since this card is a limited card, the biggest selling point is the new costume that comes with the card. And I'll show the costume right here. And also the SCR that comes with the costume. And unfortunately, since this card is a limited, it will not have an SPP. And then alongside Tori, you can get the 4-star Aichi and 3-star Makoto. And then after part A, we're going to get Suicune Swan part B, and that's going to have the 5-star Kohaku. Kohaku is a green card of his main stat in Vocal, and support skills increase drop rate of large blue pieces. And same thing for this one, I'm going to showcase Kohaku's costume right now. Like I said before, this card is limited, so there is no SPP. And then his SCR as well. And then alongside Kohaku, we can get the 4-star Ipa and 3 star June. Okay, that's it for the gacha cards. Next, let's talk about the 5 star Natsume card. So, for Natsume's 5 star, Natsume is a yellow card of his main stat in Dance, and his support skills increase drop rate of large red pieces. And what makes Natsume really special for a 5 star not gacha limited card is that this card does come with a costume. And not only just a regular costume, but also comes with an SCR as well, which is really, really rare and has not happened before. And the way you're going to get this Natsume 5 star is by playing the event and getting points. And we'll talk about that right now. So this event is called Enchanted Mirage. I'll try to go over the gameplay as simple as possible. And if you don't understand what I'm going to be saying, it's going to be a lot easier to understand once you start playing it yourself. It's pretty simple. So how you play the event is you're going to see these items on the bottom part of the screen, and you're going to tap on the boxes to put items onto the board. And then once you have two items of the same kind, as you can see like right here, you can combine them and go to the next level of that item. And basically the whole point is that you're going to be combining a bunch of items and getting specific items for one of two things. The first one is going to be for the left part of the screen right here. You're going to see some tasks. And you can see they have certain items and certain number of items that you need in order to finish the task. And once you finish the task, you'll get points from it. And then one more thing to note is that you're going to see the special task the ones that have a different color. And if you finish those tasks, they'll give you even more points compared to normal tasks. You get up to 10 a day and try to do all of them every day. And then the second way you're going to get points is by selling an item directly. So if you just press an item, you can go on the right side right here and then press the sell button. It'll show you how many points you'll get and just press OK and you'll automatically sell the item. So for selling items, I really don't recommend you doing this that much unless first one is your board is too cluttered and you need more space, which should never happen in the first place. And the second one is by selling these items specifically, which are going to be your gem slash candy items. And these are going to be very different because the gems, you can't put it on the board. You have to spawn them on the board. And what I mean by that is as you continue to combine items, see like right here, you can eventually get the gem from it. And then it's going to be pretty simple. Like you just get the gem, combine it with the same one, and you're just gonna try to get the highest level as possible. And the thing about the gems is that you don't use them for tasks, you only sell them. So these candies go all the way up to level 10. That is when you want to sell them. Because these candies give out a lot of points, especially at level 10, they give you a lot of points. Okay, and then now let's talk about the items in the bottom. So the first four boxes are just gonna be boxes of the lowest tier of that item set. And then once you just press the box like I did earlier, it'll just spawn in the corresponding items. And then green ticket right here is going to be your upgrade ticket. And what these tickets do is instead of having the same item for you to combine to get the higher level, you can use this as a substitute. So for example, if I combine this level 9 candy with this upgrade ticket, it will automatically upgrade to level 10. And this is my most recommended way for you to use these upgrade tickets. And then lastly is going to be the random box on the, on the last slot. This is going to be the same thing as the first four boxes, except this will give you a random item from any of the four sets and will 
will also give you a mid-tier item. So like level four, five, or six type of item instead of a level one, two, or three. And each box gives you 10 items per box. And then on the bottom right here, this is where you can see the points you need for certain items. And once you reach certain milestones, you'll get rewards. Okay, now let's talk about what's in the shop you can buy with diamonds. So for the first row, you're going to see exchange tickets, which I talked about earlier and the random box you can get. The random box is a pretty good choice because it does give a good bit of items, but you also have the chance of getting items that you don't need and can start cluttering your board. So be wary about that. And the upgrade tickets, they are pretty pricey. I don't think you really need that much of the upgrade tickets. It's just more of a convenience type of thing. And both the upgrade ticket and the random box do have a limit every day. And then the second row is going to be buying the low tier boxes. And you can see it says like 10 diamonds, 12 diamonds. But you should also see that this is 60 boxes, not one box. These are actually fairly cost efficient. And these are going to be the ones, if you need a certain item, I would definitely recommend you directly buying these boxes compared to buying the random box. And I'll talk more about why in the tips section later. And then lastly is the way you can buy items directly with diamonds. If you don't have the time or if you're just feeling lazy sometimes, you can just buy the items that you need for certain tasks directly and you don't have to put... The downside is that when you're combining items to get the higher tier items, you're going to get a lot of those gem pieces to get level 10 eventually. So you're losing out on that. But if you don't have the time, this is a really good option for you to just finish all your tasks as much as possible and get those points anyways. And the items here do have a daily limit. Okay, now let's talk about tips I would really give you to help make this as cost efficient as possible. So the first tip I would give you is do not buy the boxes in the shop if you plan to all at once. You should buy them in minimal amount as possible from like 60 per, 50 per, whatever. And I say this because if you try to get a specific item and you get the item and you can redeem it from the task, if you don't need to get an item from that set anymore, you're just going to be laying a lot of boxes sit there and even potentially preventing new boxes from being replenished. Try to go buy it one by one when you buy it from the store and then you'll be able to both have a low amount of boxes and then also let them refresh and not overflow because these boxes do refresh pretty quickly and I don't want you to lose out on being able to make items because you had too many boxes. The second one is I really recommend you buying the boxes from the low tier and not the random box and I sort of said this earlier but if you do the low tier boxes you'll be getting like starting from level one two or three and then you'll have more chances to spawn the gems for you to get level 10 and that's the main point is that you want to get so many of these gems so that you can get a lot of level 10s because this is going to be such a big chunk of your points that you're going to get and it's just such a cost efficient way to not use as much diamonds because if you just buy the items directly from, without combining items and getting those gems you're going to be losing out on a lot of potential points you could be getting if you have the time and if you can do it i would really recommend you just combining all the items starting from level one or the lower tier versus just getting them from the random box or buying it directly from the store and then lastly it's going to be about the upgrade tickets the upgrade tickets, I really recommend you only use it on candies from level 9 to 10 or even level 8 to 10 because like I said earlier, level 10 candies are going to be the biggest and best way for you to get points outside of task and should be the only thing you'd be selling in the events. And why I say level 8 is okay too is because if you're like free to play and if you're not going to spend a lot of resources on this event, if you still want one copy of Natsume, you're not going to get a lot of level 9 candy pieces. You're going to probably get like 5 or 6 or 7 max because it does take a long time to get these. So if you really think you need to use it on a different item, feel free to use it. Just keep some available because you're going to eventually get enough of the candy pieces to get it all to, up to level 8 or 9. Then you should use the upgrade tickets to automatically upgrade to level 10. Because as you can see right here, it gives you a whopping 18,000 points. And that is a lot. Okay, and that's it for the tips. Hopefully, I made everything as clear and concise as possible. If you have any questions, feel free to put it down below. And I'll try to answer them as fast as possible. A lot of this gameplay is going to be pretty much you playing it for you to understand it better. It's not as confusing as I make it out to be, hopefully. And it's pretty easy and actually pretty fun. Okay, and then another part of the event is going to be the Mirage Coin Shop. And this is a shop where you can exchange Mirage Coins for a lot of really good items and in order to get mirage coins you're just going to get them as you get points from the main event and you get a good bit and then once you have those coins you can exchange them for a lot of goodies from titan limited tickets to diamonds to background screens and office furniture and there's like two big things of office furniture that i think will be really important to 
show. The first one is going to be these plushies, and the reason why I say these are important or cool is that in Ian's server, our server, we're not going to get these for a long time because they start rolling these out for events, and that happens way later down the line. But we actually can start getting plushies like really early now because the event is going to happen for us, and they're just really cute. I really like them. And the second one is going to be this really nice piano right here for the second half of the event. And what's cool about it is that if you have an idol interact with it, they'll actually play a song in a piano version. It's really, really cool. And in the first half, you can also get a musical item too, and that's going to be this harp right here. And then one more thing I would advise is if you're going to get the, the time-limited tickets, be sure that you you need them when you buy them. Because once the second half starts, you can still get them during the second half. So don't feel like you have to get them in the first half. If you don't need them, just wait it out till the second half, then you can get them done. And then the last thing I want to talk about is the sort of team type of content in the event. And this is just going to be you pick either the white dorm or the black dorm. And it's going to be a team effort of how many points you get from the events. And it's going to be combined all together for your team. And then based on the certain milestones you get or how well you do, you'll get different titles and even some diamonds. Okay, that is it for the events. There was a lot of information. Hopefully I went over everything as simple as possible and as clear as possible. I know it might not be super clear, and I'm sorry for that. I try to go through everything as best as possible. And like I said earlier, Natsume can be free. I think personally, he you can't get him for free if you put in the time and the effort and you wait out a lot. But a lot of people don't have the time to get to do this event because it is very time consuming. But even if you want one copy of Natsume, I really don't think it's going to cost you that many diamonds. Like if you put in some effort and then you just need to get those last bit of points, I think you can easily do that without spending too many diamonds. And then for people that want five copies or a lot of copies, it's gonna cost you not too much. And just for reference, I saw a blog post that said, I think within like the first half of the events, they spent 40K diamonds total for five copies of Natsume. And it'll definitely cost way less if you, if you wait until the end of the second half. So just be mindful that probably 40K is going to be a good amount for you to have if you want to max Natsume out, especially in the first half. And then less if you're gonna do it in the second half like I am when it comes to our server. But hopefully this video has helped you with learning how to play the event sort of and seeing a good outline of what you should be doing. And like I said again, and if you have any comments or questions, feel free to put it down below. I'll try to answer you as soon as possible. And if you're going for the scouts, good luck on the scouts. Hopefully you get the cards that you want. And if you're going for Natsume, good luck. Hopefully you have the time to get him. And just thanks for watching. Hope you have a good day or night wherever you are. And I'll see you all next time. So peace.